I'm sure everyone knows by now, you were part of an amazing group. <laughs> so how did you end up working with Diddy? Well, Diddy ha Diddy's my superhero. Diddy is my He-Man. And so as a little girl, um, I will always look at Puff and be like, yo, he's like the coolest brown skin guy ever. And you know, you hear people like, yeah, dancing in the videos, blah, blah. But I was like, yo, you need that energy as an artist. You need somebody to have your back and be getting it. And if we took ourselves as serious, we'd probably be out of here because he, he believed in what it, the movement, you know? And um, anyhow, I was uh, freshly signed to EMI. Um, and Big John did the deal, actually. He was the president of EMI at the time. And um, he was like, uh, came to Rodney Jerkin's studio and we were like chopping it up. He was like, you know what, you wanna go work with Puff? And I was like, hmm, when? And he was like, I think it was like a f Saturday. And he was like, tomorrow. And I'm like, on a Sunday? He's like, yeah. So um, he hooked it up and I went over there with Puff. And the crazy thing is I went around the back because, you know, they walked us down past the pool and around to the back where the studio was. And they're playing his record. Boom, 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 boom. That shit beating. So I walked in the room like, what the fuck is this? Oh, my God, right? Because I'm captured in the music, like not tripping about Puff being in the other room. All of a sudden he comes in and he just hear me like, oh, my fucking God, going crazy to the beat on some K Diddy shit. And he don't got his pants on. He's in his drawers and socks and he's putting pants on. He's like, you fuck with his beat? Like, that's how we met. Like, it was just like, uh, it, like, just entered, like, magnetically connected to what this music was doing. And we just started vibing from there. But that's how Strobe Lights with Lil Wayne came out of it. And, you know, that was the first record I wrote for um, Last Train in Paris. So, yeah, just, and then we took off from there. When it was time for me to leave, writing on Puff's album. I was like, yo, who are you using for this fucking album? Like, who's gonna be on this album with you? Cause this shit is so crazy. I was just so in love with the idea, the concept. It was just out of here, it was different. And he was like brushing his teeth like, I don't know who the fuck I'm gonna use. He was like, hmm, let me just think about it. And that night he called me at like three or four o'clock in the morning. He was like, yo, I can't let you go. Like, I need your energy. Like, I think you're like dope as shit. I need you to do this with me. I need you in my group, what's up? It's not proper protocol. I'll talk to your management later, but will you do it? And I'm like, give me the weekend to think about it. Cause I had this little baby that was like eight months old. And um, my parents were like, yep. And we got Meshach and we need you to go out there and make history. And that's what I did. So Dirty Money came out of me just working hard and just believing God was gonna make my dreams come true. And Puff believes the same thing. So we met, I guess. And what was the experience like as a whole? Wow. Um, it probably be one of the dopest things aside from being married to the love of my life and, and having a baby could ever be. It was like, you know, I went from being a girl that was at home praying to God that I would get the opportunity for people to hear my music and just to see my spirit and know that I had a good heart to being on Wembley. What? It would puff, like the American Music Awards. Like I remember going into offices and like taking meetings with like L.A. Reid and L.A. saying like, no, she's not the type of artist I sign and him being front row <laughs> while I'm performing with puff, you know, or, you know, it's just like, you know, doing American Idol. Like I did a lot of sitting on Chelsea Lately's, you know, couch and it was just it was surreal. It was like it was like a dream, you know, and when I came off the high, I was a little weirded out you know like when it was time to go back home to the condo and the wine had mold in it and like nothing was in the refrigerator and you know you, you look at your house and you're like oh my god I've been on tour for like four years like just around the world and it's like bags everywhere and you have to put things in you got to go to the grocery store now and you got to like go back to this regular life it was just like I realized all that we had done and how how precious those moments were and how um, important all of the information I got from Puff was. So I just began to kind of compartmentalize it all to make it make sense for what I wanted to do next. It was like going to college. Like, you know, I got out of high school or I got out of college and I was straight to surgery. There wasn't no internships, it wasn't no nothing. It was like, yo, you hear a scalpel, you ready to cut? And I'm like, hold on, like, this is the first thing. He's like, trust me, you got it, you know? And, um, but it was dope, and I mean, like, if I ever had the opportunity to do it again, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Puff owes me nothing, you know what I mean? He didn't cheat me out of anything. If anything, he treated me better than 
he probably ever has treated anyone in his life. You know what I mean? It was basically like princess status, like, you know, this $10,000 shoes, the furs, the jets, the whatever you want. Let's get this album done. I'm going to take care of you and make sure you're good. And I just love him for it, you know. Do you keep in contact with him and Dawn? I definitely keep in contact with Puff. Me and Dawn, um, we took a moment. We took a moment, as you know, because women, you know, it was, it was a lot of tension. It was a lot of, we were competing against each other because we were just so great and just didn't know our greatness, you know. But um, it never was love lost, you know. I think it's, it, it was um, needed for us to spend some time apart. But let me tell you something, we're cool now, like on a whole different level. I love her past the solar system, like in the moon, like she's so dope and I just love her grind and her hustle and she believes in her dream and we all need space and time to kind of like like I said prioritize and make make um what we do and make sense in our own head and heart like so that has to be on one accord and I think we're both in a great space and yeah so I talked to Dawn not too long ago and she was like good luck on that reality tv I'm not that's not my thing <laughs> and I'm like okay cool I'm a you know represent and yeah I talk to Puff all the time could we see something from all three of you in the future? I, I don't see why not. I think so. I think that would be a dope idea. And I know Puff is not, you know, against the idea. I think that it's just, it was a good, it was a good thing that we got to spend that concentrated amount of time together. And it was a beautiful thing that we got to spend time apart to understand why it was all so important for all three of us because he learned so much, he grown. He's a grown man now. He understands how to treat women on a whole different level, right? And um, we understand how to take direction and understand, you know what I mean, what instructions really mean. So yeah, we got music right now we could put out. Like, why are we playing games? Why are we playing games, Puff? <laughs>